Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and we're back again taking a look at how to build a responsive WordPress website in 2021 using Oxygen. And we're on our little coffee website that we set up over the course of the last couple of videos in this series. And today what we're going to do is we're going to break this layout into the proper template structure that we need on our Oxygen site. And then we're going to build out one more page, maybe a contact us page or something like that. And then we're going to call this one done. So what we did here is we build everything into a single page. And this is just how I usually start out when I'm building a site because it's a little bit quicker to get started. I don't have to worry about setting up all the template structure and hierarchy right away. But now that we have our design, we need to go ahead and move this into some templates. Primarily, we need a main template with the header and footer and an inner content element. So let's just grab this stuff uh, and move it over to a template. There's a couple of ways we could do this. We could turn the header and the footer into reusable parts, then delete them from this page and then add them to the template. But instead, what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of a shortcut. I'm gonna go back to the admin and I'm gonna copy all the short codes here and go to oxygen templates I'm gonna add a new template and Oxygen's letting us know to regenerate the CSS cache since we have new global colors. We don't have to worry about that right this second, but we'll do it here in a minute. We'll call this new template main and we're gonna to go to other under where does this template apply and set it to catch all and then publish. And then we need to paste our short codes in down here in the Oxygen meta box. So let's paste that in, update, and then let's edit this and remove the stuff we don't need. Since we don't need anything that's between the header and footer, we're gonna replace all that stuff with a content, inner content element. Uh, so let's get rid of this section, this section, this section, and this section. Now we have our header and our footer. Now let's add an inner content element. And just like that, we've moved it out into a template. Now what we will need to do is go back to the page itself. So we'll go back to admin, pages, and we'll go to home and edit this with oxygen. And we're gonna to wanna to remove the header and footer from this page since that's now gonna be handled by the template. So let's open up the structure pane and let's get rid of the header builder. And then let's get rid of the bottom section. Now, if we take a look on the front end, it will look exactly the same but things are now being handled by a template, which is what we want, because if we add other pages, which is the next thing we're gonna do, we definitely want them to be consistent with the header and footer. Now, let's take a look at this section. We set up a hero class, which is helpful, but I think we're gonna wanna reuse this hero other places, so let's make it a reusable. We'll call it hero, click OK. We'll save and now we want to refresh and we're gonna to wanna to reinsert this reusable as an editable part. So we'll go to hero and reinsert it as editable. We'll move that up to the top here and get rid of the reusable version of it. Now we can kind of copy that in uh, wherever we want. You could also do something similar to that with the uh, design library, but eh, we're not too worried about that right now. So now what we wanna do is set up a, another page, and I'm thinking it's gonna be a page with like a product, you know, featured products or something like that, or maybe like a little uh, shop page or something. Though we're not gonna dive into e-commerce, we'll just set up kind of a mock shop page. So let's go back to admin, and let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Let's regenerate our CSS cache, which just takes a second. And then let's go to settings and permalinks. We are on Cloudways here, which gives us this weird permalink structure for some reason. We're gonna set that to something a little more reasonable. And generally you wanna save your permalinks twice when you're changing them. Uh, and then we're gonna want to go to settings reading and we'll want to set our home page to a static home page. And we'll save the changes. Now, while doing this, I kind of changed my mind. I'm not gonna do a featured products page. I'm going to do a blog archive because that's something almost every website has and it's going to be helpful to see how to set up your blog archive responsively. So let's go in and add a plugin that's going to help us with that. This is going to be called FakerPress and it's going to give us a bunch of nonsense posts that we can then 
uh, use as we're styling up our blog archive. So let's go to FakerPress posts and let's generate 32 posts. And we need to make sure that they have featured images because we're gonna use those in the design. So we're gonna set the attachment provider to Lorem Pixum and the weight to 100. Now let's generate and wait for it to finish. And it's all done. So now we'll have a bunch of posts over here. Now let's set up a blog page. Let's add new, we'll call it blog. And then we'll publish that. Go back to the WordPress admin panel, go to settings, reading again. And we want to set that as our posts page. Now we're going to go into oxygen and templates, and we're going to add a new template. And this is going to be called blog archive. And under other, or where does this template apply other, we're gonna set it to the blog posts index. And we want to inherit the main template, which means we'll end up with our header and footer. So let's publish that and then let's jump in and start editing and make this thing you know, work responsively and uh, do all the things we want it to do. So we have this overlay header effect here. We could theoretically disable it on specific pages. In this case, I'm okay with it. I want to just add our hero element from our reusables again. So let's go to hero and insert it as editable. And now it's pretty much the same exact look as our homepage. So we need to switch it up a little bit and make it look different. So let's hide this little gradient overlay div. Um, we may not even need that here. I'm not sure if we'll do a shape divider here as well. Uh, maybe we will. So let's leave it and let's change our background image first. Uh, so let's go to advanced background browse. And we have a bunch of placeholder images from Faker Press, which is cool, but we want our coffee images that we had down here. So let's do something like this. That looks kind of cool, but I don't think we need that gray gradient anymore. And we probably don't need the offset, which this is why we insert this thing as editable so we can make changes according to what we need for this particular page. So that looks nice. Now let's change the advanced background gradient to, let's set it to go to our brown color. Yeah, that looks a lot better. It still helps the um, white text pop a little bit, but it doesn't, uh, you know, cause any problems, and it blends a lot better with the, you know, the brown tones of our coffee beans and everything. Our posts, and then we would just say, you know, below you'll find a bunch of posts about our stuff that we do, and that would be great. Now we need to add a section, and we're gonna try to follow kind of a similar design to what we created on the other page. So we're gonna set the background of this section to our not quite white. And then we're gonna add in a, we can go either repeater here, which gives us a lot of visual control over the layout, which can be kind of nice when working, you know, with responsive layouts. Or we can try an easy post element. The easy post is gonna be the quickest way to get a post list. Uh, so I'll, I'll just show you that real quick. Let's drop in an easy post element. And this is gonna use one of our grid layouts by default. Let's choose uh, masonry is pretty cool, but it doesn't really match the vibe of the site. I think I would want to go with, I don't know, I really like this um, newspaper layout. So something like this will work pretty well. Now, if we go down, you'll notice that this is already responsive. We don't really have to adjust it. So that's pretty fantastic but that would be a little too easy for a video that's showing you how to create a responsive website, right? Um, so if you need a quick fix or a, a shortcut, easy post is the way to go. And you can you know, tweak the design and layout as well. But let's build this thing out with a repeater. Now, what I would kind of want to do is I want to mimic our card layout that we had on the other page. So as a reference, I'm going to add the card grid in as editable. And then I'm going to add a repeater and we're just going to, you know, mimic this layout. And we can do that mostly with the classes we created, I think. So let's add a repeater. And then the query is set to default, which is important since we're on just a, a post archive. And let's look up here at these. These have the card class and the shadow class. So let's add that here to the repeater div and shadow. And then we have an H2 here. So let's add an H2. 
And we'll probably make this more of a full width kind of post list situation rather than a card grid, but we still want the styling. So let's set this to H2. And then we're gonna insert some dynamic data by selecting all that text, clicking insert data and choosing title. Now we're seeing some uh, darkness here along the top. That's because of the shadows from the cards that are above it. Um, that won't be a problem once we get rid of the cards themselves. And in fact, it looks like I've tossed my repeater in somewhere where it probably shouldn't be. Let's just move it up here. I don't want it in that div. There we go, that looks much better. And now we need some gap and spacing. So let's use, um, we don't need grid here because we're gonna be making them full width like a normal you know, post list. So let's add our uh, kind of post meta data, like our, you know, our author and our published date. So posted by insert data, and we're gonna put the author display name. And then after that, we'll say, on and then insert data and do date. So that'll give us our kind of metadata situation there. Posted by me on September 13th. Now we can add some text with our excerpt. So double click that, insert data, and we're choosing excerpt. Now we obviously need some spacing here. So let's do bottom uh, small and then bottom large on this one. Nope, that's way too much. We'll do medium. And there we go. And then uh, this card already has its padding and stuff, but we also need some uh, bottom spacing on it. So we'll do large between the cards. And then now finally we need a button. So we can add a button. And then we should have a button class we can use here. And I believe it was card button, yep, CFE card button, and that gives us our button, read more. And let's put some spacing uh, below this text here, size and spacing, actually we'll use the class of course, bottom, we'll do uh, medium again. So now we have our post grid. That took us a couple minutes to build, right? And you would think we might need to go through and adjust some things, but if we go down to less than, uh, 480 pixels, it's responsive. I mean, we're not we're not gonna need to make a bunch of adjustments here. Let's go up here and refresh. So we're on home and then let's go to slash blog because we haven't set up our menu just yet. Our posts, we get this beautiful header, this hero section. We scroll down and we get to see all of our posts. And let's view it uh, responsively and it just, kind of works. And the reason it kind of works is because of all the groundwork we did way back when we first started setting up this site, where we set up the responsive values for the headings and things like that. So by doing all that, we've saved ourselves a ton of work and we go to create other layouts, we can reuse what we did before. And it just works. Now, obviously, this excerpt is a little bit long, you would probably want to adjust that. But it works. So let's, uh, let's go in and let's add the featured image. I do want that on these posts. We can get rid of this um, card element here. So let's select the div and delete those. And let's go up to our top uh, repeater div and let's add a featured image. So let's click add, drop in an image element and put it up to the top and we're gonna do data featured image and then insert. Now this top one, of course, my luck, doesn't have a featured image, but if we scroll down through the other ones, you will see what it looks like. So let's do this. And our images, of course, are responsive as well because they're set to a max width of 100% by default. So our blog layout is basically done and our site is fully responsive, works on mobile, and will look good for anyone visiting. So from here, once you have the groundwork laid out, you saw how easy it was to build this blog page. Now you can just go ahead and build out all the other stuff you need on your site, and you don't have to struggle a lot with making the site responsive because of the stuff we did early on, and it makes building a site 
just a lot easier and a lot more viable from a fine tuning standpoint if you make those global adjustments immediately and then later just rely on those things, those frameworks that you've set up early on, then you end up doing yourself a huge favor and it's much, much quicker to build things out. So the last thing I want to talk about just quickly as an aside is performance. Now, we all know that uh, Google has changed some things recently and performance plays in a lot to how your site ranks now. And the core web vitals that Google uses are very important. So it's important that our responsive site performs well on the Google PageSpeed Insights mobile test. So I didn't do any optimization on this site. Everything I built you saw on video, I didn't do any extra you know, image compression. I turned off gzip. I turned off uh, varnish, which is on this Cloudways server that I'm using. So I have actually gone the other way. I've de-optimized this site while I was building it. And so I was curious and wanted to run the PageSpeed Insights report to see what the score was without any optimization on this site. And, and I'm primarily concerned with the mobile score. So let's pop over there and take a look at the mobile score of this site with zero optimizations in place. And we're getting an 89 on mobile right out of the gate, which is insane. Like that's way better than I even expected after turning off gzip compression, turning off varnish caching, taking away all the performance stuff that normally is on by default on the Cloudway server. I'm getting this score right out of the gate. No cumulative layout shift. Timed interactive is good. Total blocking time is good. Everything's really, really good on this. The only thing that we could improve is we really need to turn on caching, turn on gzip, and optimize our images because I grabbed the largest size from Pexels on all the images we used. So we're loading gigantic images, which it'll probably show down here that we're, you know, we're loading very, very large images when we really don't need to. So a responsive site is all good and well, but a responsive site that loads in 10 seconds is no good for anybody. And when using Oxygen, it's gonna be easy to get these kind of performance scores out of the gate without a whole lot of work after the fact. And especially if you use, you know, really good hosting, Cloudways tends to perform pretty well for us too. So with that performance aside out of the way, I think that wraps up our build of this responsive WordPress site in 2021 using Oxygen. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and thank you very much for watching.